Hello students, welcome back to Clary Concepts, Unleashing Conceptual Learning. Today in this lecture, we are going to talk about the pressure measurement using one of the very important device called YouTube manometer. Okay. So as I discussed earlier also that pressure measurement has its own importance in the process and power industries where you will see lot of fluid networks, fluid flowing through the pipes and measuring the pressure at different junctions of the pipe is very very essential to make sure that the equipments, mechanical equipments like pumps, compressors they are running in the optimal efficient performance, right. So uh, in order to measure the pressure in the pipes, there are various devices that you can have. One of them is YouTube manometer. We already saw piezometer in the earlier lecture. So today in this lecture, we will see how to measure the fluid pressure flowing through the pipe using the help of YouTube manometer. All right. So uh, basically piezometer we already saw, which has a simple basic mechanism of band tube. And it has a lot of disadvantages that we have also discussed. And in order to overcome those disadvantages, P, uh, the YouTube manometer was introduced and uh, the people can use to measure the pressure of the fluid where piezometer cannot be used uh, for measuring the pressure, right? So let us see what is this. So basically YouTube is nothing but a simple pipe which is in U shape and the left portion of this pipe is uh, of the tube is called left limb and the right portion is called the right limb and it also has a manometric fluid with it, right? So you have the fluid which is heavier in nature. So let's say the manometric fluid has density rho m and this is nothing but the YouTube manometer basically, right? So this band YouTube with a manometric fluid is called YouTube manometer. Currently both the ends of the YouTube manometer are open to atmosphere and therefore the pressure uh, phase are exposed, I mean both the surfaces of the manometric fluid are exposed to the atmospheric pressure, the same pressure and therefore the level is totally horizontal. Neither of them is up, neither of them is down, right? Now what will happen? Let's say you have the main pipe through which your actual fluid is flowing and uh, the density of the fluid that is flowing is let's say rho 1 kg per meter cube and there is a section over here where you want to measure the pressure of the fluid which is flowing through the pipe. Now what you will do? Simply you will drill a hole and you will connect one of the end of your tube to this end. So what now will happen is the fluid from the main pipe will start flowing in and it will uh, you know uh, enter the left limb of the YouTube manometer. Now both the faces that you see one of them is open to atmosphere and one of them is uh, connected to the main pipe. Now if you look at it from the front view see if you look at it from the front view you will see something like this. So this is the main portion of YouTube manometer. If you look at the main pipe this is sectional view and this is manometric fluid and look at the faces this and this. This is exposed to the open atmosphere and this is exposed to the pressure of the main pipe. Now if the pressure of the main pipe is larger or lower, it depends on that the level of mercury or manometric column will be adjusted. So say for example, pressure within the pipe is larger. Now for larger pressure within the pipe, the, the pressure on this left surface of the manometric fluid will be larger and pressure on the right will be lower. So what will happen uh, obviously is this manometric fluid will drop in the left limb and will rise in the right limb, something like this. Okay. And now on the other hand, if pressure within the pipe is lower than atmospheric, then what will happen is pressure exposed on this manometric surface is larger compared to this. So there will be a reverse case that you will observe. Now depending on both the cases, your formula for measuring the pressure will be different. So let us understand both of these one by one. So we will take first case one where the pressure within the pipe is greater than atmospheric and therefore the pressure, I mean the, the arrangement of manometric fluid is something like this. The, the left limb has more pressure, the right limb, right surface has the lower pressure, right? Now this is the final arrangement of the uh, manometric fluid where density of the fluid is rho m and density of the main fluid is rho 1. Now the main purpose of YouTube manometer is to identify the pressure of this point called A because this is the pipe which is flowing where the fluid is flowing through and your purpose of using YouTube manometer is to find pressure at point A. Now let me mark different points in the tube point B over here, point C at the junction and then point D and the horizontal line and then point E over here. Now what I will do is let me try and uh, find out the pressure A in relation with the other points. So firstly, let me mark some different heights. The vertical height between B and C is let's say H1 meters and that between D and E is H2 meters. Now can I say pressure at A and B are equal? Yes, because both of them are on the same horizontal line and can be connected by the continuous line. So pressure 
at A and B will be equal. So somehow if I know pressure at B, I can find pressure at A. Now what about point B and C? <coughs> can I use hydrostatic law between point B and C? Yes. And what will happen? C is lower point, so pressure at lower point equal to pressure at higher point plus rho GH, where rho is density of the fluid between these two points. So which is the fluid? Fluid with rho 1. So rho 1 GH1. So PC equals to PB plus rho 1 G. H1. So now, if some from here, what is pressure at point B? Pressure at point B will be PC minus this. So PC minus rho 1 G H1 is pressure at point B. So somehow, if I know pressure at point C, all the other terms will be I will be available with this value. So rho 1 is density of the fluid. I know the density of the main fluid. G is 9.81. H1 I can easily measure with the linear scale. So if I know the pressure at point C, I can measure pressure at point D. And if I know pressure at point D, I can measure pressure at point a. So now how to get pressure at point C? Let me connect this with D. So can I say pressure at C and D are equal? Let me mark this equation number 2 where rho 1 is density of the fluid in main pipe, G is 9.81 and H1 is the distance. Okay. Now can I say pressure at C and D are equal? Yes. Why? Because both of them lies on the same horizontal line plus they can be connected by a continuous curve being in the same constant density fluid called manometric fluid. So therefore, pressure at C and D will be equal. So therefore, if somehow I know pressure at point D, I can get pressure at point C. If I know pressure at C, I can get pressure at B. If I know pressure at B, I can get pressure at A, which is my ultimate objective. Now, how do I get pressure at D? Pressure at D and E, can you relate? Yes, I can use hydrostatic law between these two points. And I can say that pressure at D, that is lower point equals to pressure at E, which is higher point, plus rho M g and h2 rho m g and h2 now from here what is pressure at point e it is open to atmosphere so it is atmospheric pressure so pe is atmospheric so now this is equation number four so i got pressure at point d i can say that if pc and pd were equal so pc is also the same value yes if pc is this i know pb equals to pc minus rho 1 gh1 so i can substitute the value of pc in this equation so i'll put this in place of PC, I will get P atmospheric plus rho m g h2 minus this rho 1 g h1 as it is. Now, PB is, I, is what, I know what is PB. Now, can I say PA is also the same thing because PA is equal to PB. So, this is the final equation which I was looking for. So, pressure at point A can be found using this equation called P atmospheric plus rho m g h2 minus rho 1 g h1. Where P atmospheric is atmospheric pressure, rho m is density of the manometric fluid which I will be having. G 9.81, H2 is the linear distance which I can calculate using the linear scale. Rho 1 G H1 also I am aware with. So this is the final formula with the help of which you can find out pressure inside the flu fluid flowing through a pipe at this section. Clear? Now let us take case 2. In case 2, the pressure within the pipe is lower than atmospheric. So this will have a reverse arrangement. So let us say this is like this. Okay. And here let me mark several point F, G, H somewhere over here and then I and then uh, parallel to I I have J point. Now what I will do? I will mark several heights so distance between G, H is H1 and H and J is H2 meters. Now I want the pressure at point F. Can I say pressure at point F and G are equal? Yes, because they both lie in a horizontal line and also they can be connected by a continuous line being in the same fluid. Now what about G and H? Can I say that? Uh, pH equals to Pg plus rho 1 GH1. pH equals to Pg plus rho 1 GH1. Yes. So from here I can get Pg. Why I want Pg? Because I want Pf. So Pg will be equals to pH minus rho 1 GH1. Now if in order to get Pg, I also need pH. So can I use hydrostatic law between H and J? Wherein I can say that Pj is equals to pH plus rho m GH2 because here manometric fluid is filled. So, Pj equals to pH plus rho m GH2. So, from here, I want the value of pH. So, I can say pH will be equals to Pj minus this. pH equals to Pj minus rho m GH2. Now, what about pressure at J and I? Can I say they are equal? Pressure at J and I are equal. Why? Because both of them are on the same horizontal line and they can be connected by a continuous line being in the manometric fluid itself. So, pressure will be equal. So, therefore, what is Pi? Pi is atmospheric pressure. So, can I say Pj is atmospheric pressure? If Pj is known to me, I can put it over here to get pH. So, pH will be what? pH will be P atmospheric minus rho mgh2. If pH is known to me, I can put this pH over here 
to get pg so pg is ph minus rho 1 gh1 i'll put this value instead of ph i'll get pg equals to p atmospheric minus rho m gh2 minus rho 1 gh1 and now what is pg pg is equal to pf which is i was looking for so pf is equals to pg and therefore pf equals to the same value so in this entire expression i know all the values and i can easily find out the pressure at point f which is what i was looking for right and you can substitute the values in this equation to get the pressure so this is uh, about uh, measuring pressure using the uh, youtube manometer case 1 formalizes and case 2 formalizes now let me take you to one of the very interesting fact that you would say sir always i need to do this kind of derivation and i need to waste my time i will give you one very easy trick so you will really enjoy that trick and you will get this equation the final form of this equation without doing lot of laborious uh, mathematical work okay let us see how to get both these equations within a fraction of uh, minutes right within half a minutes uh, and then you can directly put the values and get the answer let us go back so we will take both the case one by one and i will simply give you one funny example with this so let us say i have this youtube manometer and for case one i know that pressure in the pipe was larger so the manometric level in the left limb was lower and the right limb was higher and i will mark the points which i already marked earlier a b c d and i have the heights h1 and h2 which you are aware with in case one now what you need to do you need to imagine yourself that you have stuck in the pipe so let's say you are sitting over here you are sitting over here in the main pipe you have stuck and your objective is to come out of the pipe uh, up to the atmospheric level so come out of the youtube manometer now when you travel from a to b then b to c c to d and then d to e what you have to do is you have to constantly keep a track on the fluid pressure that your face is feeling right so how will you do that let me show it to you so let's say when you are at point a the pressure felt by your face by surrounding fluid will be pressure at point a so i'll just write pa now see you have to use something over here and whenever there is a change in the pressure felt by your face you have to add or subtract it accordingly so now when you move from a to b do you think your face will experience a different pressure at point b than it was facing at point a no because we know pressure at point a and b are equal and therefore at all the other points between a and b will be equal so this pressure at point b will also be the same as pressure at point a so no need to do anything over here now you move down to point c so here point b will also have same pressure you move down to point c the moment you move down to point c the pressure felt by your face now what do you think will it be different from what you felt at b obviously yes now when you are moving in the depth you are aware based on the hydrostatic law when you move down the pressure will increase so the pressure that you are feeling at b will be lower than you are feeling right now at point c so when you are moving from b to c the pressure felt by your face has increased then my question is by what amount it has been increased it has been increased by the amount called rho 1 gh1 because density of this fluid is rho 1 so rho 1 gh1 is the amount by the by which the pressure is increased so what you will do simply you will do plus rho 1 gh1 the pa was the pressure felt at point b and now when you came at c the pressure felt is increased by the amount rho 1 gh1 so you will put plus rho 1 gh1 and now pressure at point c will be this entire value pa plus rho 1 gh1 correct okay now move from point c to d when you move from point c to d now tell me do you think at point d whatever pressure you are feeling is it different from what you felt at c i would say no because the c and d are on a same horizontal line they can be connected by the continuous line so pressure at c and d will be equal and so you will not have to do anything over here that means this is the pressure again felt at point d by you now when you move from d to e the pressure felt by your face will reduce or increase or will be same you are moving upward my dear so that means you are going towards a direction where pressure is reducing now obviously when you move up pressure will get reduced now question is by what amount it has been reduced by the amount rho g h what is rho rho of density is the density of the fluid filled between e and d which density is filled this is manometric fluid rho m so rho m g and height h2 but it is reduced so you will use minus rho m g h2 
right and that means what this is the pressure felt by your face at point e and therefore you can say this is pressure at point e now what is pressure at point e it is atmospheric so you can just replace pe with p atmospheric and now you can take all this term on the right hand side so <coughs> sorry so what you'll get is pa equals to p atmospheric this term will get negative so minus rho 1 gh1 and this will get positive so plus because you go on right hand side it will be positive plus rho m gh let me clear all this ink okay so pa will be equals to p atm minus rho 1 gh1 and plus rho m gh2 now you look at this equation you just have derived this within two steps and this equation is the one which you already faced which you derived in the in the previously right with a long method now you do the same thing with case 2 very simple very quickly you are at f point you go to f2g and then g2h h2j and j2i okay starting from point f you are at this point pressure is pf you move to g no change in pressure because you are moving horizontally and the pressure at f and g are equal you will not do anything over here you move down to h towards the distance of h1 in a fluid of density rho 1 and this is rho m so your pressure will increase by what amount rho 1 g and h1 okay so plus rho 1 g h1 then you are moving from h to j by distance h2 in a fluid of density rho m that means your pressure is again increased by the quantity rho m g h2 so again you will do plus rho m g h2 and then you move from j to i no change you will not do anything and that means this is the pressure felt by you at point i so this is equal to pi now what is pi which is p atmospheric so you put p atmospheric in place of pi and take both this term on the right hand side will be this terms will become minus so pf equals to p atm minus rho 1 g h1 minus rho m g h2 this is the final formula which you were looking for simple two steps you will get the answer so i hope you understood the shortcut method that too logically for more such conceptual videos or engineering concepts log into our website clariconcepts.com thank you so much see you in the next class